Hello and welcome to the Out of the Sandbox video guide to the page templates. Today we're going to take an updated look at the page templates that are built into your updated Out of the Sandbox theme. And at the time of this recording, that includes Responsive version 6.0, Mobilia version 5.0, Retina 4.0, and Parallax 3.0. So if you want to make sure to follow along with this uh, updated video, go ahead and update your theme to any of those recent versions, any of your favorite ways, including heading over to the Shopify App Store and installing the Out of the Sandbox Theme Updater app, which will install an updated version of the theme that you're using on your Shopify admin panel in an unpublished state. Then you can reconfigure the home page using far more robust settings and take advantage of the new Shopify sections interface. But we're not talking about the home page today, we're talking about the page templates. Let's take a look at what we're working with on the Shopify admin panel. Here I am on my admin panel of a demo shop. I just want to show you that when we go to online store and into pages, this is where you add pages to the Shopify platform. If you were looking for detailed instructions on how to do something like that, Go ahead and check out the Shopify documentation for instructions on how to add a page. But this video is going to address the page templates that are specific to the Out of the Sandbox themes. So here I have some pages. I'm just going to open up this demo page here to show you that I have created a new page. I've added a title. And then I've simply added two paragraphs of placeholder text. And I've added this image here, which has some dimensions within it. And the important part for this video is taking a look at this selector down here, which is where you select the template for the page. And as I expand it here, you see that this theme has a number of special templates. The templates that you see available here correspond with the templates that are available in the theme that you have published on your Shopify admin panel. So if you don't see these page templates, it could be that you're working on your theme in an unpublished state and you'll need to publish the theme before having access to all of the templates. And your Out of the Sandbox theme will have the same templates. It may not have uh, page.banner, and it may not have page.no title, and we'll talk about those in a minute, but the rest of those templates will be there for your use. So after we create the page, we can simply go view from right here in the page editor, and it will open up an example of our page. So here it is opening up within a parallax theme, the two paragraphs display as expected. The title of the page is appearing in the style associated with this theme, and then the image is appearing below the text. So there's actually no additional settings associated with this demo page. But let me show you a type of page with a special template that does have extra settings that you might consider maybe a little bit hidden. And I'm going to show you that using this contact us page. Here I have created a page. I've titled it contact us and I've added the address of my fake location. Of course, very important, set the template to page.contact so that I'm using the features of the contact page. So I can go ahead and view this page to see an example of it. And here it is loading up. We have our title appearing along with our address and a contact form. This contact form will appear on the page by default. Whenever a user submits this form, the message is sent to the email address set up for your Shopify account in the general settings of your admin panel. But below that, we see we have a map, and the map looks to be unconfigured. It is not corresponding with our address, even though that's not a real address. But this leads me to believe that there are additional settings associated with this page that we haven't taken a look at yet. Well, there are steps involved in accessing those settings, and I'm going to show them to you now. So we have created the page. It's also important that we create a way to navigate to the page, because we're going to need to navigate to this page from within the customized theme interface. So in navigation, here I have a main menu with a drop down that gives me access to that contact page. So I've created a menu that gives me access to some of the pages I'm going to be demoing for you today. You're going to need to do the same thing to access the settings associated with some of these templates. You'll need to create the page, set the template, and then come on into navigation to create a way to navigate to the page. So then when we go to themes, customize theme, 
Here I am in the new Sections Settings interface, where I have a preview window on the right, and I have the settings on the left, separated into the Sections and General Settings settings. But these section settings are currently associated with the home page, which is what is being displayed in this preview window. So I'm going to go up here to that drop down menu I created and navigate to the contact page so that we can see that some contact page settings appear here on the left. And it's here that we can enter the actual street address. And as long as it's an address that can be uh, sought out on Google Maps and it pulls up an address on Google Maps, that same address will work in this field. You can set the map zoom level as well with this setting. Then with the parallax theme specifically, you have access to add a banner image, which is a parallax style scrolling banner image that will appear at the header of this page. While we're on that topic, for the parallax theme specifically, the page.banner template is a template that will allow you to configure a banner image for your custom page. I'm just going to pull up a quick example here for you so that you can see that you have the ability of adding that parallax style scrolling banner to the custom page. I've just switched the template here from the contact us template to the banner template. I don't suggest that for the contact page obviously, but just to show you that there is that extra template with the parallax theme. All right, back in my list of pages here on the platform, I'm going to show you a couple of other examples that have to do with the overall formatting of the page, starting with this narrow example. So this is the exact same type of page with the same text and images, but I have set the template to page.narrow. Let's take a look at what this page looks like. So here it is appearing. We have our title and we have our text with image. It looks similar to the uh, other demo page we created, but as you see, it is constrained to a more narrow formatting. To be technical, this demo page uses the entirety of the 16 column framework, while this page uses only the center 12 columns of that 16 column framework. Conversely, we have another page template here, the wide example. Same content here in the editor, and I've set the template to page.wide. And as we take a look at this page, you'll see that it has broken out of the column framework entirely. Anything within this template will span the width of the window, or as wide as the element can appear. The reason this image is not appearing the full width of the window is because the window is about 100 pixels wider than the image that we're looking at here. But as you see, the text has indeed broken out of that 16 column framework to span the full width of the window that we're looking at. So across those three examples, you can see the difference in overall margins and spacing to the left and right of that content. Let's take a look at another example that has to do with the formatting of the content on the page, and that's this multi-column example. So here we have an example where I've got some text followed by an image, then another section of text followed by an image. So let's take a look at this content when it's set to just the regular page template. So this is what it looks like. So if we were looking to format this where this was all appearing in one row in a four column setup, this is how it's done. We can go over here and set this to page.multicolumn. Then we need to add what we call a split tag in between the sections of text and the images. This is done within the HTML editor of the content. So we're going to flip over to the HTML editor here. And now you don't need to know how to code to be able to do this, but it would help if you're able to identify which blocks of code are associated with which blocks of text and which images. So to do that here, I'm just going to kind of locate these blocks and separate them out to make it a little bit easier to take a look at. Great. Then between each one of these blocks, I'm going to add that split tag, which goes something like this. It's an open bracket with an exclamation point, two dashes, a space, S-P-L-I-T, another space, dash, dash, and then the close bracket. So I'm going to just copy that, and I'm going to paste it between those other two blocks here. Great. And I'm going to save it. And we'll take a look. And here it has created this multi-column layout instead. So by selecting the template and adding those split tags, you can create a formatting very similar to this. And if you were to say only add the two split tags, 
the theme would know to create this as a three-column setup as opposed to a four-column setup. Fascinating. With those last four templates that I have uh, showed to you, the page template, page.wide, page.narrow, and page.multicolumn, there are no additional settings associated with these pages. Another page included within your Out of the Sandbox theme is the gallery page. Gallery page is fairly easy to make by just using this insert image icon here to add images to the editor. This is what it looks like in HTML, which is just simply a listing of images. We have set the template here to page.gallery, and as we take a look at it, not only do the images appear here on the page, but they're appearing in a gallery format. So when we click on the image, it opens up in a full-size light box with the ability of scrolling between the other images in the gallery. So really easy to set up a gallery page, simply add the images to the page, and then change the template to page.gallery. You can include text within this page as well to appear above the gallery images by adding a split tag below the image code, and then adding a paragraph of text below that. And this is how that will appear on the actual gallery page, just above the actual images. Finally, an awesome new example here, this sidebar page. This is the same page content that we've seen before, but I have set the page template to page.sidebar. Let's take a look at this exciting new page template. Well, it looks exactly like the original demo page. That's because there are other settings associated with this page. So keeping in mind that we needed to set up a way of navigating to this page first, let's go over here to Themes, Customize Theme, Navigate to our sidebar page example, and notice that the settings here along the left have changed to reflect a special sidebar template. So here we are where we can add content blocks, and these content blocks are sections to be added to the sidebar. We can add a collection list, which is a listing of all of the collections on our shop, with links that lead to those collection pages. We can do the same thing with a listing of types on the page, a listing of vendors. Then we can add as many or as few of these next three content blocks as we'd like. A menu, and this is a list of menus corresponding with the menus that you create in the navigation settings. Let's add this random menu here just to take a look. You have the ability of adding as many text sections as you'd like, and these text sections can be edited right here within the settings with this rich text editor where you can bold and italicize text like this. If you're looking to render text into a new paragraph, use the Enter key, whereas if you were looking to render text just into the next line without starting a new paragraph, use Shift-Enter, and that works with any of these text boxes that you see within the section style settings. I'm going to go ahead and add that final content block, which is a section of page content, and you can select a page from the listing of pages on the Shopify platform. So maybe not the best page example here for a sidebar. In fact, this sidebar may be too long for this page, but I wanted to show you that it's that easy to add these blocks, to configure the blocks, and then look at this. You can simply drag the blocks around to reorder them in the listing on the sidebar. So that's how you can take advantage of the content blocks to create a robust sidebar for your custom page. To keep it all tidy, enable this toggle sidebar content setting, and you'll see that each section of the sidebar here has been made into a toggle that can be expanded and collapsed just like that. As always, if you hit any snags or you had any questions, head on over to support.outofthesandbox.com where you can search for your question and find a plethora of resources to help you out. Thank you for joining me for this video guide. My name is Sean Campbell. Take care.